Okay, this is just going to be a summary of, uh, of sets, and uh, we're not going to get into the, any details of set theory, considering this is just intermediate algebra. But sets um, is really more or less the foundation, uh, from what I can understand, of really of mathematics. Um, let's talk first about a set that you're probably more familiar with when it comes to uh, math. So the first set that we learned was the set of natural numbers. So this is the set of natural numbers. Now let me just say something here. I'm writing this in a sequence because um, that's what we're usually uh, taught. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a sequence of numbers here. But we can actually write this as a set of numbers. Now, these three dots here indicate that I'm going on forever. Okay? So, for example, 100 is in this set. So, if we're talking about the set of natural numbers, this is pretty much how we would write it. And we usually indicate that with the boldface N here which N stands for natural numbers. Okay, now some terminology. Um, first off, we got to make sure that when we write out a set, we want to use the curly brackets here, or the curly braces. This is what we use. We do not use brackets. Okay, these are square brackets and these are curly braces. We use curly braces and not that. Right, so we don't want to use that. Okay, each member, we could say member of the set, we call these elements. These are all elements of the set N. And we could say, okay, 5 is an element of N, and we would write it like this. 5 is an element of N. Right, 5 is an element of N. Um, 99 is an element of n and I was writing that with two lines here. Okay, well even though 99 is not uh, seen actually in the set, but it is implied that uh, 99 is actually in this set. Now there's another set and we're going to label this with a W. This is the set of whole numbers starting with 0, 1, two, three, four, and so on. Now the difference between the set of whole numbers and the set of natural numbers is simply that we added zero to the set. So that's the only difference between the set of natural numbers and whole numbers is that we added a zero. Now as you can see right here all these numbers and going on in that direction forever this is the set of natural numbers, and it's actually in the set of whole numbers. And we say that N is a subset of W, and we would write N is a subset. So this is the notation here we use. N is a subset of the set of whole numbers. Okay, N is a subset of the set of whole numbers. All right. Now let's just talk about a set more generally. If I had the set A, now this set can contain anything we want it to contain. It's uh, Generally it's called just a set of objects. Um, it could be just a set of objects. For example, we could say there's a tree in this set, um, a rock in this set. All right, so it doesn't have to be numbers. It can be anything. Um, some water. But normally, uh, there's some type of relationship that's going on between these guys right here. Now, this set right here has three elements in the set. There are three elements, and we could say this by we're using these uh, vertical bars here, that the size of A is 3. The size of A is 3. There's three elements in the set. 
So in this particular set, we could say that this is a finite set, and that is that we can count all the elements in the set. Let's look at some more sets here. Let's say that I had a set, we'll call it just the set B, and what happens if there's nothing in the set? Well, that's we can have a set that's there's nothing in it. And we actually called this set the empty set. So this is known as the empty set. And we can also, um, you, we use a symbol sometimes. It looks like an O or a zero and a line going through it diagonally right here. So this symbol right here is known as the empty set. Now we talked about uh, a subset earlier and that was that the natural numbers were a subset of the whole numbers. Now let's give uh, some more examples of subsets. Let's say that we had the set A and there were only two things in this set and that was A and B. So A and B could stand for anything you want it to stand for. This set here, the set that contains just A, well this happens to be a subset of big A right here. So this is actually a subset of A. Another subset of A would be the set itself. That's right, the set itself is actually a subset of A. The set itself. Now you see this line right here? This means that we can say that the set itself is a subset of A. But if we didn't write this line underneath here, then we can't say that this is a subset of A. So it's almost kind of like um, less than or equal to, right? But this is kind of a sideways U here. This is not a, a, a less than sign. Well, there's another um, element that's a subset of A, and it happens to be the empty set. The empty set is also a subset of A. But you're saying, but I don't see it in here. Well, it's in here. Take my word for it. And I'm going to show you why it's in here. Let's say that we have the set B. And in the set B, we have the elements C and D. Okay, the elements C and D. Now you're going to learn a new operation, how we can operate on both of these sets. If I said A union B, okay, so this is an operation, A union B, what we would end up getting here is A B C and D. So union means you just join them both of what's in set A and what's in set B. You would join them together and you get an entirely new set. Alright, so we're trying to take uh, the union of both of these sets here. Oh, we already did that. Sorry. Okay, we're going to take the intersection. What happens is I make these videos five minutes uh, at a time, and then I gotta paste them together. And uh, so I forget what the heck I did in the last video. But anyway, okay. So we're taking the intersection, and what the intersection is, it's an upside down U. So if I were to say A intersect B, and we're looking at both this set here and this one up here. Okay. A intersect B. And what intersection is, is what does B and A have in common? 
In other words, what's in A that's also in B? And uh, there's not an A and B, there's not a B and B, a small b that is, and there's not a C and A, okay, well, they don't have anything in common. So nothing's in common, therefore, we write our set, but there's nothing in here, okay? So as you can see, A intersect B is equal to the empty set. Remember, this is the empty set. Now, what do A and B have in common? They have the empty set in common. In other words, basically what we're saying here is, is the empty set is actually in A and the empty set is actually in B, but we just don't write it there. It's not written there. Okay, let's look at another example of, uh, of this stuff. All right, let's um, let's let's look at another set. Let's say we had the set A, and let's say that uh, one and five and seven and nine are in set A, and then in set B we have two, seven, ten, and twelve. Okay, so we're reviewing here real quick. First off, what is the size of A? And what is the size of B? Well, remember the size of A is the number of elements that are in A. This set is finite, which means we can count them all here. One, two, three, four. So there's four elements. So we're just reviewing here. One, two, three, four, and there's four. Okay, there could be, these could be totally different numbers here. Or you could just have two elements in set B if we wanted to. All right. Is A a subset of B? And no, A is not a subset of B because if A were a subset of B, then that means that all of these elements in A would also be in B. And they're obviously not. But let's look at those operations again. A union B, so this is kind of a quiz. Man, that looks like a terrible A, but A union B is equal to, so remember union, we join both of these sets together. Now, here's something that we don't do. We don't repeat elements. In other words, well, when I get to it, you'll see. So I'm going to write a 1. Um, I'm going to write a 5. And write a 2. Um, it doesn't matter what order you write these things in. Uh, a 7, okay, there's a 7 in set A, and there's a 7 in set B. Now, we're not going to write 7 twice. We only write it one time. We do not repeat elements. Okay, uh, what else we got? We got 9, 10, and 12. Okay, that's their union. What about A? intersect B. A intersect B. Now, what does A and B have in common? The only number that's in common with A and B, and it looks like it's a 7. So this time, the set has one element in A intersect B, and that one element happens to be a 7. Now you can write this in any order you want. We could have put a 12 in the beginning here and a 1 over here and a 9 over here. So the order doesn't matter on how we write the set. So it's real simple to uh, to figure out how to find the union and the intersection. There are some other operations, but like I said, this is supposed to be just a summary of what a set is and talking about subsets and then elements. So I'm going to actually now kind of, let's do a little quiz here. We talked about first, in the very beginning, the set in. And the set in consists of, well, the numbers that we were first introduced to us way back when, right, and dot, 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 goes on forever. Okay, the question is, is this a finite set 
or an infinite set. This set is infinite because it goes on forever. If I were to say, let's, let's look at this set here. So this is kind of a special set. As you can see here, this is the set of odd numbers, right? This is the set of odd numbers. So, I don't know. We'll say odd numbers here, and we'll call this one even numbers. So this is going to be the set of even numbers. Two, four, six, eight. Whoa, there's supposed to be a six there, Nelly. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and on forever. So this is the set of even numbers. If I were to take the set of um, why don't I put an n here? This is the set of odd numbers. Yeah, even numbers. Okay. The set of odd numbers and man and union that with the set of even numbers we would get the set of natural numbers, right? We'd get the set of natural numbers because we would just join all the odds with all the evens and we'd end up with, well, this set right up here. But if I were to take the set of odd numbers and intersect it with the set of even numbers, right? what do these two sets here have in common? And that is not much at all, right? Don't have anything in common, so this would end up becoming the empty set. Now, real quick here, I just now realized something. If I'm given the set A, B, and C, and we'll call this set X, X, and we'll call this set Y, B, and C. Okay, is set Y a subset of X? Y is a subset of X, and that is yes. B and C are contained in X. Now, this set is known as a proper subset. This is called a proper subset. All right, A, B, C is not a proper subset. In other words, the set is a subset of itself, but it's not a proper subset of itself. So if I were to say, if I were to give some set Z and I said this here, then basically what this says is this set Z here must be a proper subset of X. Okay, this must be a proper subset of X if we don't include this bar down here. But if I include the bar, then basically what that is saying is, is okay, Z could be X. We could say that Z is actually X. Okay, hope you're not getting confused there. So we looked at two kinds of sets. We looked at uh, finite sets and infinite sets and subsets and um, things, things like that. Let me ask you this before we go. Is K an element of X and the question or the answer to that is no and we'd put a line through it. K is not an element of X but C is actually an element of X. We could say right there.